Hey guys, welcome to The Farming Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. My name's Leslie. I am The Farming Pastor's Wife and I am thrilled to have you in my kitchen down here on the farm. I am going to make something today I have never made. We're making a red velvet cake. Can you believe I've never made a red velvet cake? And it's actually one of Caroline's favorites. But let me just say, if you're new here, I'd love for you to hit subscribe, hit that bell notification, and be sure to give me a thumbs up and share my videos. If you're back here, I am so tickled to have you back. You know how much I love and appreciate you. And when I say that, I truly, truly, truly mean it. I love and appreciate you guys more than you know. So let's run the intro and then we'll come back and talk about why I'm making a red velvet cake and I'll tell you a little bit about the recipes I'm using. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey darling, we could get out of town, see the beautiful world around. So I am using my microphone today. Hopefully the battery won't go dead. If it goes dead, we are in trouble. So um, I know you guys have said you can't hear me very well sometimes, but oftentimes when I use the microphone, it dies and then there's nothing. Like you don't get anything. No, I, I'm, I'm talking, but there's nothing coming out. <laughs> so you really can't hear then. So we'll try to get through this and I'll try to keep the microphone charged. But why am I making a red velvet cake? because today is all about Daniel. If you're new here and you haven't been with me or if you're just back for several months, I mean like if you've missed a few uh, months worth of videos, Daniel is our employee here on the farm, but he is so much more than an employee. He is Bryant's right hand man. He is family. He is a church family member. So let me just tell you, he is so much more than an employee. I mean, I don't even like saying that because he's so much more. Anyway, today's his birthday. And um, in our family, what I do is I make their favorite meal, whatever it is. And so he wanted a red velvet cake and he wants breakfast for supper. So I've got my bacon and sausage thawing over there and we're going to make this red velvet cake. Now, let me talk to you just a minute before we get started on this cake. I researched recipes and, and there was parts of recipes I didn't really like and so forth, but I came across this one that had one, in, I didn't really like the recipe except this one ingredient. I was like, yeah, we gotta put that in there. Well, then I contacted a friend of mine from church. He is a great cook, a great baker, and I knew if anybody had a good red velvet cake recipe, he did, and he did. And I loved his recipe, except I want to add this one ingredient in. So I'm going to kind of merge two recipes together. And um, I will leave down in the description below my friend's recipe, okay? That's the one I'm going to leave. His exact recipe just as he sent it to me. So you can just make note of the change I make, the changes I make um, as the video goes along. Okay, so that's the deal. All right, so I'm gonna grab everything out. We're gonna get started making this red velvet cake because I gotta get it done. I gotta get it cooled. I gotta get the icing made and supper made. So we gotta hurry. We're in, we're in a crunch time. Okay, everyone, so let's get started on this cake. I'm actually going to go grab. All right, so let's get started on this cake. Let me make sure my mic is on. Hopefully I don't hit it and you hear these loud cracking and popping. You're probably picking up my oven and my dishwasher going though. All right, so I'm starting with two and a half cups of flour. I am using cake flour, but if you don't have cake flour, just use all purpose. It's totally fine. 
um, that was two and a half cups, a cup and a half of sugar. I'm going to mix together my dry ingredients. I have a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking soda. Now, if I was using salted butter, I would leave out the salt, but I'm using oil and not butter, so um, we're going to put both of those in here. And we're going to use about two tablespoons of cocoa. All right, so let me give this a whisk and whisk up my dry ingredients. I've got my oven preheating to 350. And I just want to give a big shout out to my friend William who sent me his recipe. I appreciate it more than you know. It's good to have people you trust when it's something you haven't ever made before to have people you trust. Now, like I said, I am changing a little something only because I really want to add this one particular ingredient. So now let's add in the liquid ingredients to this. Here is my first deviation. His recipe called for a cup and a half of oil. I'm putting in a cup of oil. And you're going to see why, because the special ingredient I'm adding is another liquid. So that's why I cut back on the oil just a little bit. So I'm going in with a cup, but his actual recipe will be down below. So if you want to follow his recipe, it will be linked down below. All right. I'm going to go in with um, about a teaspoon plus some. Y'all know me and my love of vanilla. That's vanilla. Um, probably more like a tablespoon, but yeah. I didn't measure it. I just poured it in the container. Two eggs. Okay, the best ingredient of all times, the buttermilk. I think buttermilk is perfect in cakes. I love a cake made with buttermilk. I was so excited to see the buttermilk. And I'm actually going to grab a spatula so I can get all that out. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I think a cake made with buttermilk is so moist and so delicious. Love it. Absolutely love it. Okay, here is a, an odd ingredient, a little teaspoon of uh, vinegar. I'm adding um, white vinegar to here. And here is the ingredient I'm adding that's not normal, I guess. Coffee. I love a cake made with coffee and I saw this in one and I didn't really like the rest of the recipe but I thought this was so intriguing. So I'm adding in a half a cup of coffee. Um, just leftover coffee from this morning. That's all it is. And I know several of you will say, well what if I don't like coffee? What if I don't like the taste of coffee or whatever? Um, trust me when I say you don't get the coffee taste. It just enhances the flavor. It's just an enhancing thing. It just gives the cake a certain depth that you just can't understand. I have a chocolate cake that I add coffee into and I add it into the icing and you don't taste the coffee. It just gives it a richness that I just don't know how to explain it. But Anyway, I'm going to mix this together with my hand mixer. I'm going to cut the camera off for that so you don't have to listen to it, especially with my microphone on. But I'm going to mix this together. I'll bring you back when we get ready to pour it in the pans and you can see. Oh, you know what I forgot? The red food coloring. Hang on. Let me grab that. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and mix it before I add the red food coloring because I really have no idea how much to add. I think the recipe called for two ounces. I have no idea how much this is. I also have some gel if we need to add. So I'm actually going to mix it first and then we'll add in the food coloring. So I'll bring you back for that in just a minute. Okay, everyone. So I've moved you over here a little bit closer so you can see. Um, 
here is my batter and I'm going to add a few drops of red food coloring. I don't know, that was a good squirt. Okay, yeah, I thought it's going to take probably this whole entire bottle and probably some of my gel. Uh-oh, my beater came out. Okay, everyone, I added just a pretty nice, good, I'll show you, about this much from the gel. And I'm just going to scrape off my knife and call it good and beat that in. And we should be good to go after that. It may be a pink cake <laughs> instead of a red velvet. But it's kind of looking like my batter bowl, so I'm actually going to stop there. I, I, I think I'm stopping. <laughs> Y'all tell me, is this too light or is it good? So, all right, I've got my pans mixed up. I mean, mixed up. I've got my pans sprayed and ready. And so I'm going to grab a spatula, move my beaters, and we'll start pouring this up. So usually when I'm doing a layer cake, I like to take a measuring cup and evenly distribute it, but I'm just going to eyeball it since this is a very um, liquidy batter. We're just going to eyeball it. Let's go a little more there. A little more there. Okay, so hopefully we have them evenly distributed now. It smells good and chocolatey. Some chocolate I didn't get mixed up. All right. So I'm not sure they're exactly evenly distributed, but and I'm going to give them a little, that just gets any air bubbles out. All right, it's going in a 350 degree oven for about 12 minutes is all. Okay, everyone, the cakes are out of the oven. I will say I don't think I used quite enough red food coloring, but I used what I had. Um, I didn't use enough of that gel. I probably should have used more of that, but... <clears throat> it won't affect the taste. It'll only affect the looks. Um, so I'm going to let these cool completely because I want to slice off the little bit of the top, the dome area. I'm not going to slice much. I really basically am only going to slice that off because I want the crumbs for the to decorate the outside of the cake with. So we'll let these cool. Now, I got away with using my hand mixer to make the cake. But I am going to get out my stand mixer to make the icing. And so that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so let's get started on this icing. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I am, I'm not doubling the recipe, but I'm going to um, increase it by a half. So one and a half times the recipe. So um, just know that, but I'll put the actual recipe down in the description not what I increase it to I just like to have extra just in case that's just me so instead of um, one block of cheese uh, cream cheese we're gonna go in with a block and a half
a block and a half of cream cheese. Oops. And the same thing of butter, a stick and a half of, let's see here. Let me go ahead and get the half in. Of softened room temperature butter. And instead of four cups of powdered sugar, we're going to go in with um, six. All right, let's get this kind of whipped together real quick. I'm going to start adding my powdered sugar. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit and add it a half a cup at a time. And I'm actually going to cut the camera off just so I don't lose count because <laughs> I don't want I don't want to lose count. So I'm going to get it to six cups this is a half measuring cup a half a cup and so um so now i've put in one whole cup of sugar we're going to keep going until i get six cups in there and i'll bring you back okay i've got all my powdered sugar in there so i'm going to turn it up just a little bit I'm going to add in a little bit of vanilla. This is just my addition. You don't have to add that. And I'm just going to whip this till it's nice and smooth and icing consistency. Okay. I'm just going to give it the finger lick taste. Oh my, that is good. All right, let me go wash my hands, shake off the beater. I actually am going to scrape down the sides just to be sure I've gotten everything. And um, I'll meet you back when it's time to get the cake ready and iced. So if you're new here, I'm going to give a little disclaimer, making sure my mic is on. Um, the, here's the disclaimer. A cake decorator, I am not. In fact, I probably should be on, if they came up with a show that was America's Worst Cake Decorators, that's probably where I need to be. So, don't laugh at what the cake looks like when we're done, but it's going to taste good. I can guarantee you that. What I'm going to do is I am going to take off where it domes up just a little bit. I am going to take that off. I'm going to keep them because I'm going to use that in my decorations, or at least I think I am. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just laying my bread knife flat against it and just ever so lightly taking off the top little dome there. But I'm going to keep it. I'm going to do it again just to be sure I've got it all. Some more came off, okay. All right, so I'm gonna do that to every layer as we make this cake. So, my cake stand, I get so many comments on my cake stand. Where did I get it? You want one just like it. Well, let me tell you, there's a gentleman in our church and his mother, um, she was the epitome of class she she looked like she had stepped out of vogue magazine and she was in her 80s but you would never guess it she was just i mean audrey hepburn classy she was just um she was just the epitome of class and anyway she passed away the family she had so many nice things and they did like a an estate sale it wasn't an auction it was much nicer than an auction and um, I got this 
and it was her. So um, I'm tickled pink with it. It is heavy as all get out. <coughs> heavy. Okay, so we are going to ice this cake. My, my layers are cool. It is not as red as I wanted, but okay, that's all right. So I'm going to grab my icing. I'll be back here with you in just a minute. Really not sure why I'm even going to film me decorating this cake because I'm that bad at it. But anyway, I always put a little bit of icing down on the bottom just to act as glue. And I'm actually going to turn this over where the actual pretty, pretty side is up top. And I'm just going to put a big dollop of this. I could eat this icing with a spoon, y'all. It is that good. It is that good. And I'm just going to smear it, moving it to the edge. The reason I put the cut side down too is um, the crumbs. I'm still getting crumbs from the cake, but um, not as many as I would have gotten had I used the cut side. Another reason to use crumbs as the decoration because if you get crumbs in your icing, <laughs> you say, I meant to do that. I meant to do that. That's part of the look. All right. Okay. I'm going to do this same thing to the other two layers. And then when I get ready to finish icing the cake, I'll bring you back so you can watch and laugh with me. Okay, so to make thing, I got it iced. The thing I do to make it look like I think I know what I'm doing is I give it peaks and I just take my small offset spatula or a butter knife or whatever and I just go and I dab it and I lift up little peaks. Um, and I'm going to do that all over. I did forget to do my wax paper trick that keeps the cake plate clean. But that's okay with this one because I'm going to decorate the bottom with those crumbs of the um, cake. And I just go around and give it little peaks all over. Sorry, that noise is not nice. And if I see some you know, thick areas, I just take my spatula and slide it up and then I go around and keep making my peaks. Now, <laughs> I don't even know why I'm talking to y'all about this because I have no clue how to decorate a cake. All right, so I'm going to let this set up. A little bit before I put the crumbs on plus I want my crumbs to dry out just a little bit um, the, you know the top layers of the cake that I took off I want it to dry out just <coughs> enough to um, so I can sprinkle them I'm gonna sprinkle around the bottom and then a, a little bit on the top but here's the cake thus far <coughs> That cake plate is so heavy. Okay, see, I have a spot here. I thought I saw a spot on the video, so I'm just going to take my icing and fill in there. And I have more icing. I almost used it all. I mean, really, there's not enough to even worry with, but if I see thin areas, I can go in and just fill them up. And then after I fill them up, give them some peaks. Just by dabbing my spatula on and lifting it up. All right, so I'm gonna clean my cake plate a little bit and get this in the refrigerator and let it set up just a little bit. But first, it is that good. It is that good. Okay, I'm going to clean this up. I'll bring you back when we finish it up and, of course, when we taste it. Okay, everyone, I'm going to end this video here now. 
be sure to tune in to Sunday's video if you want to see the taste test. Okay, so be sure to tune in to Sunday's video if you want to see the taste of it. Let me tell you, I've already taken the crumbs that I saved, spread a little icing on it. Bryant's tasted it. Daniel's tasted it. They both said it was delicious. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek at the cake, the final product, and then be sure to tune in to, pretty sure it's going to be Sunday's video and for the taste test. There she is. It looks kind of red on top of the white, don't you think? I still might could have used a little more red food coloring. But anyway, all right, guys, I will see you guys next time right here on The Farm and Pastor's Wife. Remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, y'all.